week as we dive into the half truth around habits and goals. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into the heart of habits and goals, and I'm hoping to expose a couple of the half truths that are out there and end with some really practical strategies based on the science around habits and the science around goals to set you up for a meaningful conversation with each, with each other in that next breakout. When it comes to goals, it's a funny thing. I find that some of us just love goals and some of us absolutely hate them. On a personal note, I love goals, but I've also been failing at them since my sixth birthday party. And I know what you're saying, you're like, since you were six, what do you mean? So here, here's the scenario, right? Where I'm six years old, got kids in the backyard. My parents are trying to make something fun. So they do what a lot of parents do. They put up the pin the tail on the donkey. Game is pretty simple. You've got a little tail, you've got a paper donkey. You're gonna spin you around and you're gonna try to put the tail on the donkey. Now what really happens is you put it in the donkey's eye, you put it somewhere else. And uh, if you're peeking, you might try to pin it on your younger brother or one of your friends. I mean, those things happen, right? You usually don't get it right on the tail unless your parents really just navigate you and they, and they put it pinpoint in that specific spot. So you finally get there, but it just doesn't have that full fulfillment. So you do pin the tail on the donkey and then they decided to do another game with the kids. They set up the pinata. I'm pumped for this because you know it's in the pinata. It's full of candy. It's a dental nightmare for years to come. So you're excited. And again, I don't know what the theme is, but they blindfold you and spin you around again. They give you a baseball bat. Hopefully you don't hit anybody's head. Um, and you take a few whacks at it. Maybe a little candy comes out. You give somebody else a turn. Eventually, the pinata finally breaks. And it might be more because dad yanked it too hard than because you actually hit it. But eventually, your grubby little hands get all over the loo till you get your sugar rush. Um, and I found that oftentimes goals feel like that. And we, we oftentimes feel like, gosh, goals just don't work for me. And that's the first half truth that I'm going to be getting at today is that for some of us, we hate the idea of setting goals. It feels like that New Year's resolution where you were really sincere and said, I'm going to lose 10 pounds or I'm going to meet that special someone. And then there's no plan. There's no materialization. Nothing actualizes. And you say, you know what? Uh, goals just don't work for me. Or maybe in this season... COVID hit and all your goals went out the window for your business. And you say, okay, well, we're just gonna throw these away. Then we're gonna put them up on the shelf. Goals just don't work for me. We're gonna do our best, we're gonna survive. On the other hand, I've, I've been engaging with a lot of leaders who over the last couple of years I've noticed have gotten enamored with um, uh, habits and routines. And they say, you know what, forget about goals. Uh, I'm beyond that. I've, I've kind of evolved to that next level of a professional in my development where I've actually got things dialed in. I've got this amazing morning routine. Let me tell you my technique, how I optimize everything. I, I get everything started at the beginning of the day and I'm consistent throughout. I don't really need goals. I just, I've, I've got this, I've got this unlocked. The challenge for that is while they might get a lot done and they actually might be really uh, have like an amazing routine is that without knowing the why and the purpose, what direction you're going towards, we can become really good at become, becoming routine machines that are optimized, but for the sake of what, for what direction. So what I want to get into is that goals and habits, there's a ton of research on them I'm going to share. They are absolutely powerful motivational ingredients for you and for the people you lead but sometimes they don't work because we don't take the, the right approach or because we lose sight about the purpose behind the goals that we're going towards. So let me, let me quickly define what I mean by habits, what I mean by goals, and that I'm gonna get into purpose and intent and break down the anatomy of really good goals, really good habits, and how we can do a little bit better job at it. So I went to Webster's, of course, and it defined habits a couple ways. One of the definitions for a habit was a settled tendency or usual manner of behavior. A settled tendency or usual manner of behavior. Another definition I really liked was an acquired mode of behavior that has become nearly or completely involuntary. Nearly or completely involuntary. And I love that involuntary piece. It's a habit, it's a knee-jerk response, it's a compulsion. We just do it. And I'm gonna get back to that involuntary piece in a moment. 
And then a goal, which is really related, and I'm going to be talking about these in an interchanging way because they're similar. A goal was defined as an end toward which effort is directed. It's pretty simple. An end toward, toward which effort is directed. Synonyms being uh, an aim and ambition, an objective, your intention, your purpose, your target. So that's what we're meaning by habits, what we're meaning by goals. What I often find when it comes to, to goals and habits is that oftentimes we can lack purpose and intent. And so we can be going in a direction, but we don't often stop to say why. There is a great song by Macklemore, if you caught it, that talks about good intentions. And he's singing the song about how he's got these good intentions, all the things he wants his life to be, but, and he contrasts it with what he actually does. And I think a lot of us approach, many of us approach goals like that. We treat it like a good intention or we use that word, uh, that phrase, it's the thought that counts. Now, it's the thought that counts sounds nice. In Tool, you miss an anniversary getting your special someone a gift, which I've never done, but if I did, I would tell you <laughs> uh, that it's not good. At that moment, you start to realize, you know what, it's not just the thought that counts. Because intentionality is a little bit deeper. It's about having planned and measured actions in a particular direction. You're doing something with intent. You're not just having a good intention or the thought that counts. And with a lot of leaders that we've worked with, when you have conversations, you, you hear this, I hear this often, where they've climbed the ladder in their career only to look down and realize, wait a second, I'm actually on the wrong roof. And so we might be able to optimize and dial in our habits. We might be able to have amazing goals, and we're going to get into some of those specifics. But if we find that we've reached a place, we've worked hard to reach a place we don't actually want to be for ourselves individually or for organizations, that's kind of a shame. And this is one of the reasons why as a coach, I've done a lot of career coaching, some of the worst potentially misleading advice that I've heard people give and receive on a regular basis is follow your heart because it's a partial truth, it's partially misleading. Because oftentimes we might go in a direction that we want to go only to realize that, gosh, maybe that wasn't really where I truly desired to go. Or as I evaluate it later, I start to question what I did. And so it, we need to take the time to evaluate what is the purpose? What is the thing that I'm going after? Because we can muster our energy towards something, but is it something that you actually care about? Is it something that matters? This is where sometimes with, uh, when I'm coaching leaders, I'll talk about what do you love the most? And that sounds kind of funny, but we think of our affect, what we actually care about, our affections, we'll go after something if it's worthwhile. And sometimes our goals aren't working or we find ourselves in the wrong place because we haven't stopped to say what actually, what was worthwhile? Let me, let me give you two examples and then I'm gonna give you a flip side. Um, many of us have had or have seen somebody with a newborn. And so as parents, this crazy thing happens where suddenly you start to sacrifice things that matter to you like sleep or your ambitions or some of your preferences for this tiny little helpless human who's not giving you a lot back yet. It may, may not ever or for a long time. But, but why do you do it? Because you love that little kid and you're committed to their well-being even above maybe even your own well-being. Or I think about education. All of us, whether it's an educational program, a training program, um, how many of us have made in, uh, incredible efforts, endured long hours, intense training to achieve a promotion, get a credential, or get prepared for some sort of experience? And the reason, why do we do that? It's because the reward was greater than the cost. On the flip side, all of us have a friend who we won't name, who would like to be in better shape, right? But the reality is they also really enjoy catching up on their favorite shows on the weekends or in the evenings or just chilling out. Now, there's nothing wrong with getting a little chill time, some downtime, but your, friend, the, that your friend's problem isn't that. It's that they, have, they might, in some cases, have a stronger love for the comfort of that comfy couch or some snacks, or whatever else they're filling their time with. They love something more, they have a stronger affect and energy towards something else, than their own fitness and the self-confidence that might come from a, from a healthy and active lifestyle. So at the end of the day, they have chosen, they love something, they've purposed something better, maybe unintentionally, maybe involuntarily, because it's their habit, than something else. 
We see the same thing with coworkers. You might have that super conscientious, over committed coworker who never says no to an assignment, always takes things on, even if it's at the detriment of their health or their family. Now, is it that they don't care about themselves or their family? No, but what they really love more is the affirmation of others, and that's where their efforts get directed. And so sometimes we have to start with what is the intention, what is the purpose, and maybe even getting a little philosophical here, I'll get into some practical things, getting into what do we actually care about the most. Many of us will set a lot of goals, and if we were to evaluate them and say, which ones actually have true meaning and true purpose for myself, for the business, what is worth directing my energy towards? Because habits and goals work. We know that they work and there's some specific things we can do, but sometimes we don't know why we're doing that or we just get into technique and we might get to where we're going and then when we get there, we say, why was I even doing that in the first place? Only to set another goal. It's a hamster wheel. Goal setting works, habits work. Goal setting is one of the most researched areas in psychology, almost bar none. It is unbelievably overwhelming the mountain of evidence. I won't get into all that today, but goals work. We know goals increase the per increase performance and there's a ton of nuance in there. But one of the things we, we, we often see is that people will set those goals and they just put them on the shelf. So some people just set goals, but they miss that other half of how do I actually strive for the goals or make them regular and repeating so that I revisit them and make them, again, that's where the habits and goals together what I'm seeing a lot of people today is like, I do my goals or I do my habits. How do, we, how do we bring those two together and revisit them often? If you have a goal, again, like COVID, if something changed in your organization, some of you might have just given up and said, let's just survive the rest of the year. And, and I'm not decrying that because you might need to, but there's a lot more motivational effort for you and for others than just self-preservation and surviving. And so maybe you need to increase your performance and say, we got to double down on this or revise your goal and say, let's lower our expectations. But, but instead of throwing them out the window, what does it look like to revisit and visit your goals on a regular basis to make them rhythmic? And this is where goals and habits become interesting. So here's, let me share a couple things about the science and I'm going to give you, uh, hopefully this gives you some fuel and some fodder for the conversation you're gonna have. The first, like I mentioned, is starting with purpose. And that's the reason why that purposeful goals assessment that Dr. McKenna talked about, before even getting into the mechanics of setting a goal, we start with what's the purpose behind different areas of your work and life? Know the why before the what. So once you've got the why in place, if you've evaluated that, we know that really good goals are super specific. The more specific your goal is, or your habit, the more likely you're gonna get into it. They're also challenging, but something that's realistic. So a do your best goal, it's one of the reasons why I see a lot of leaders going into that, let's just survive the year. Um, I, I know where that's coming from, but get a little bit beyond surviving because it, it, something that's challenging or that's meaningful is gonna actually fuel your motivation to others a little bit more. And then commitment, bringing others into it. It's one of the reasons that in these sessions, we use the chat so often is as we talk about next steps and things that you can do, we know if you share them with others, you're gonna increase your likelihood of making it happen. It's one of the reasons that our goal setting tool in our system allows you to set goals with people outside the organization. Because sometimes the people who are gonna help you move towards those things that matter are not your, is not your boss, it's not somebody on your team. Those absolutely those are part of the, the, the package, but it could be somebody else. And so who are the folks you can harness around you or share that you're going to do it? Because when you tell somebody you're going to do it and you commit to it, it increases your motivation. You might just by bumping into them know it's a reminder to you that you're going to be moving into that. I had a, a, a guy I was mentoring once. Every time I bumped into him, I'd ask him, hey, how are you doing on that financial certification? And then I stopped asking him, and every time he saw me, he'd say, hey, here's the progress I'm making. He just felt like by seeing me, it was reminding him to move into that. Also, really good goals have a feedback loop. And this is one of the things that I, very few frameworks for goals put in. And I liken it to basketball. I loved playing basketball as a kid. And part of the reason was you can calibrate in real time. So if you take a shot and you completely miss the hoop, you get a sense of, okay, where was I? And how do I need to adjust? Or if you take a shot, it bounces around the rim. What do I need to do? Is I a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left? And you can start to calibrate real time. It's one of the reasons why for me, after this session, I'm gonna watch the recording 
and I'm going to be in real time developing myself as I go. So I've got specific goals and habits that I have and that I'm trying to re redo for the ways that I speak and communicate even on a Zoom call. And so think about what type of goals, can I set a goal that will give me real time feedback in the moment so I can course correct as I go? Super powerful. Habits take specificity of goals even deeper. There's a researcher named Peter Golwitzer and Megan might throw one of the articles in the chat. There's some groundbreaking research about 20 years ago, goal ago, which is the foundation of all the habit stuff you see out there on memes and posted on LinkedIn and in books today. And he really looked at how do you make, if you've got your goal, you've got a direction, maybe it's a health and fitness goal. And you say, I want to get really specific about making it happen getting specific about not just the what, which is what we often do with the goal, but when, where, and how. What, when, where, and how. So I've got friends who will say, hey, I'm, I'm trying to run more. That's fantastic. It's part of an overall fitness goal. And so I'm gonna get specific. I'm gonna set my running shoes out and my running clothes, clothes the night before, having a specific place. I've decreased that friction to make it easier. I've got a time in the morning, a specific time I'm gonna wake up and go on my run. I might even pick my running loop ahead of time on my map and I've got a contingency plan for weather because I wanna make sure that this becomes a habit. It actually builds into my rhythms and all the things I can do to reduce that friction and take that goal I set makes that, it's like a, a bridge between activating the goal, actually setting the goal and activating it and getting after it. It's one of the reasons why higher education actually works because higher education, or if you think of sports in high school, they have all the ingredients of goal setting built in and so if I'm thinking of myself or my team, I'm often thinking of how do I not just set those goals, but how do I create a condition or a system, an approach that's gonna create the conditions for it to happen? It's one of the reasons why oftentimes folks who have been in athletics, after they finish their sport, maybe it's in high school or college, they'll tell you, I was so productive then, and I'm, I go through this challenge and this struggle where I'm trying to figure out how to be productive again, because a lot of those things are baked in, the specificity, the goals, those rhythms, the, the timing, the commitment, the feedback loops, all of it is just built in with you. So as a coach, when I'm working with a leader or a leader with their team, this is one of those things that I love to lean into. It's why Google's OKR framework, the objectives and key results has become so popular recently because it has all of those elements baked in and it's got that frequent checking, that tracking, that reevaluation. Smart goals, OKR, whatever framework you've used or used, there's nothing magical about it. But part of it is, again, do I have that right purpose and direction? And then can I mechanize it and make it into rhythms? So goals and, and habits are powerful. What we purpose as leaders matters, both in the tactical things we do, but also in the bigger direction. So Two, two, two overall takeaways I'm gonna leave you with as you get into your breakout. The first is start with heart. As you lead with intention and purpose, ask yourself the question when you, when you set a goal, it's kind of a funny question, what do I love most? And what, what's the purpose behind this? What do I, where am I hoping to go? What am I hoping to do? What's the intent or the purpose behind this goal, this direction for myself or others? It actually doesn't matter if others set a goal or not. As long as they commit to it and believe that what the goal you set is the right direction, that's what matters. And so don't worry too much about um, is somebody going to adapt, adopt it uh, or do they have to set it themselves? As long as they adopt and they say, I, I like where we're, where we're going, it doesn't matter whether you set it or you invite your team to be a part of it. But start with heart. What do you love and why are you going to put effort behind it in the first place? So start with heart, but then continue with the science. Build super strong, specific goals and invite people in your journey and connect those goals to the habits, habits and rhythms. So it's something that you're reevaluating, you're revisiting, you're recalibrating as a business. Maybe it's quarterly. As an individual, I do with it with, with uh, in coaching at least once a month. I want to revisit goals and say, where are we going and why? Because one of the big shames is if you get that, that morning routine, you get everything dialed in, you climb that ladder only to find that you're on the wrong roof. So start with heart and continue with the science. And I'm excited to hear the conversation you have about the things that matter most for you, even in the back half of half of this year, and what are some of the ways that you might lean into those. Sorry, I'm muting myself. Thank you, Dr. Halleck. That was uh, 
my brain is sufficiently lit up. The circuit boards are exploding right now. So, um, and I, I just thinking a lot about you in this space, it, it, you, uh, tremendous stuff. So we're excited to get you into breakouts to have a chance to talk about this. Um, in just a moment, again, if you're new, jump right in here and we'll have a, a, a contained amount of time for this. But here are a couple of questions as you go into this. One is, as a leader, what is the most important goal for you to accomplish by the end of the year and why? It's kind of interesting to bring your own context, bring the real time thing you're facing. As a leader, what is the most important goal for your, you to accomplish by the end of the year and why? And what's your plan to make it happen? Um, also give yourself permission. There's some of you who are being lit up by some of the things that uh, Dr. Halleck just said. And so integrate that as, as appropriate and as you wish. Uh, so we're excited for you to get into this. Um, the Zoom rooms will be opening as Megan launches that out there. So go ahead and join. If you have any trouble getting into your room, we will sure to try to help you um, and get you settled where you need to go. Um, and we're excited for this conversation to happen. Looks like most folks are getting a chance to jump out there. Um, I see Grant and JD and Joanne. People are still locking in there. Nicole, always good to see your face. Awesome. Love it that you're part of this conversation. Tamar, bring it, bring it in the chat as usual. Tamar always brings it in the chat. We got some great comments in there. Joanne, looks like Joanne has stepped away. So Joanne uh, found the uh, content so compelling that she had to go take a break. And she's, uh, now she's gone and it's just us, but I'm just gonna keep talking and practicing uh, my MC great. skills. Oh man, team, how was that? So good. Really cool. So good. We could turn off yeah. the recording if you want. Oh yeah. No, we'll keep it going. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh